Today I will be discussing developmental networks. The example that I will use to illustrate this network is the spiny beetle. As you can see, there are five genes in the pathway that control the spikes in the beetle. S, P, I, K, and E. These genes are important because not all of the ectoderm cells of spiny beetles have to have spikes. Some cells are smooth and some are spiky. By using this developmental pathway, you can see and understand why this is possible. The arrow in between the genes means to activate and the T-bar means to inhibit. If the pathway were to run as currently shown, the cells would have spikes, but sometimes mutations occur. When a mutation occurs, we get a variety of spiky and not spiky cells. We are given four different mutations and will determine if they cause spikes or not. For the first mutation, the P gene is removed. When this happens, S does not have P to activate, meaning I no longer has anything to activate it. If the I gene is not activated, it cannot inhibit K, which means E can no longer produce spikes. So when the P gene is removed, the cells do not produce spikes. For the second mutation, the I gene is removed. In this case, S can still activate P, but the P gene can no longer activate I. If the I gene is not activated, K cannot be inhibited, meaning E cannot produce spikes. So when the I gene is removed, the cells do not produce spikes. For the third mutation, the I and E gene is removed. When this happens, S still activates P, but the P gene can no longer activate I. With I gone, nothing inhibits K, and without the E gene, the spikes cannot be produced. So when the I and E genes are removed, the cells do not produce spikes. For the fourth mutation, the S and K genes are removed. With the S gene gone, P cannot be activated, which means I can also not be activated. But with the K gene removed and inhibited, the E gene can produce spikes. So when the S and K genes are removed, the cells do produce spikes. When thinking about why not all of the cells have spikes, we look to environmental pressures and defense mechanisms. In order for the spikes to benefit the beetle, they need to be located in areas that will deter predators from eating the beetle. Whether this means the spikes are on the beetle's back, side, or stomach, the spike's location increases the animal's chance of survival. This relates back to Darwin's survival of the fittest. Also, if the beetle was covered from head to toe in spikes, this would hinder its movement and make it harder to obtain food.